Open it up for questions or comments. Senator Steve Koff here from uh, Cleveland.com. On Obamacare replacement, do you, do you expect that those who are signing up for policies right now for the 2017 year will be able to continue with those policies through 2017 and that any changes will take effect in 2018? Yes. Um, if you look at what happened um, with regard to reconciliation last year, um, there was a transition period, and I think that's very important. Um, you don't want to pull the rug out from under people who, for no fault of their own, <clears throat> find themselves in a situation where they're relying on, on the subsidies, or for that matter, uh, you know, people who are in businesses that are, you know, relying on the, on, on the mandates and the kind of coverage that's, that's required. So I think you need to be careful. Same with Medicaid uh, expansion. So I think there has to be that, uh, that assurance. Senator Brian Duggar from the Toledo Blade. Hey, Brian. Um, how are you? <laughs> hey, Michigan recently declared parts of a Lake Erie, Lake Erie impaired. Do you think Ohio should take a similar step? Um, you, you know, I've talked about this, I think, before. We talked about it in the Blade editorial board. And as I said there, I, I want to do what's best for the lake, and I want to do what's practical, and we want to continue to make progress. And we've made a lot of progress in, in the last couple of years, um, including, of course, getting uh, – I think about $41 million in grants now made available through uh, the Natural, uh, National Resources Conservation Service, NRSC, to help farmers reduce runoff, which is a big part of the, the issue in, in Toledo. Um, that brings it, by the way, to about $77 million uh, over the next few years. And we also, I mentioned the Great Lakes uh, Resource Initiative, the uh, uh, GLRI funding. We got $300 million into that, a lot of which is used for uh, mitigating some of the environmental impact on, on Lake Erie. Um, and then, of course, we have the new legislation that's requiring the uh, agencies to work together, which is the algal blooms authorization legislation, and we have the clean drinks we want legislation. So we've got a lot going on right now, and we've got a good relationship, in my view, between um, the, the tri-states, uh, including Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, to, to reduce the um, the phosphorus and, and nitrogen coming into the lake uh, by some, you know, we have some ambitious goals, 40% reduction. So I think we're on the right track. Um, the governor and, uh, you know, the Ohio EPA makes this decision, as you know, as to whether to uh, declare it impaired or distressed. And I think you just need to, you know, they just need to look at it in terms of what's already going on and, you know, what would be most helpful. I know that the city of Cleveland, or the city of Toledo, and I think some of the water systems are concerned about what some of the impact could be on them uh, with that kind of a uh, declaration. So that just needs to be balanced. And uh, bottom line is we need to do what's, what's best for the lake. We had a decent summer, as you know. We, we didn't have the issues we'd had the previous <clears throat> few summers. A lot of that was because of weather, I believe, not so much because of, uh, uh, you know, the reduction in the uh, phosphorus and nitrogen. But we are beginning to make progress on that as well. And I think that has to be the goal, is uh, regardless of what it's called, <laughs> uh, you know, by US EPA or anybody else, we just got to continue to force the federal agencies to work better with state and local agencies and nonprofits and the agriculture community and continue to make progress that we've made over the last few years. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator, this is uh, Tim Rudell from uh, WASU. Hey, Tim, can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, let me turn up the mic. Can you hear me better now? That's better, thanks. Okay, sorry about that. Um, the, as you mentioned, the lame duck session and the and the, and the various bipartisan uh, matters that you're pursuing. Yeah. Um, you're heading into an administration that, uh, at least by the way it looks before they get started, uh, is going to be pretty far the other way from some of the things that um, that have been uh, bipartisan. They're going to be uh, uh, perhaps more uh, intent on on um, going a direction more in their view. Do you see? The, is there a greater need to get something done during this lame duck session because the new administration may not be as uh, amenable to some of the bipartisan issues that you want to pursue? Well, you know, I, it's interesting. I listened carefully to President-elect Trump's victory speech, and I was impressed because he talked about getting things done and working across the aisle to accomplish results and that this was an opportunity to turn the page um, and to get past some of the partisan gridlock. So. 
I don't know if I agree with your premise because I do think, and in some areas at least, uh, this might be a fresh start. But you're right, in some areas, and Obamacare may be one, uh, you know, there might not be the bipartisanship. Uh, there are short-term opportunities here in this next month for us to get some things done that I know help Ohio. And so I want to get them done. And there'll be plenty to do next year. As we said, you know, if you look at health care and you look at tax reform, you look at regulatory release or uh, infrastructure improvements, uh, there's a lot, lot to be done. So I guess my answer would be, even if create the wheel, you know, we've made a lot of uh, uh, progress with the House and the Senate, Republican and Democrat alike, in coming up with a bill we know can pass. It got out of committee 20 to 2. It got out of the floor 85 votes. We've, you know, we've we've done the hard work, lots of hearings, lots of work, and if you allow it to lapse and start it over again next year, I think there's a lot of uncertainty. And this is important to jobs in Ohio, important to reducing emissions in Ohio, it's important to making us more energy independent in Ohio. So there's a lot of good things for, in, for, for Ohio. So I just don't want to let that go, which is why I'm pushing hard to get as much done as we can during this uh, short-term session between now and, and Christmas time. Thanks. Hi, Senator. Jeremy Pelzer, Cleveland.com. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, I um, just wanted to see what you thought about Trump naming Steve Bannon as his chief strategist. Yeah, I, I've seen some back and forth on that. I mean, he's going to, you know, fill a number of these key staff roles, uh, and there's no confirmation process in that, so we don't have a, have a role in it. Um, every president, I guess, gets criticized by some for some appointments. Uh, ultimately, you know, the buck stops with, with him. Um, not his advisors, having been, you know, at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue, works in the White House. Sometimes people get uh, focused on appointments and really um, their advisors, and ultimately uh, the president's going to you know, make the big decision. So I, I don't have any particular comment on it. All I can tell you is I, I really want to work with this new administration and get some things done, and I'm hopeful from the conversations that I've had, particularly with Mike Pence, uh, and then the comments that I've seen being made, including uh, the president-elect's victory speech uh, and other comments that he's made, including the 60 Minutes interview, that there is an opportunity here to extend the hand and to break through some of the gridlock that people hate. You know, if, if there's a reason not to get something done to help move the economy forward, uh, fine. But when it's just sort of partisanship, um, you know, let's, let's look beyond that. Let's figure out how to fix this tax code and fund infrastructure more. Those are, you know, there should, that should be kind of a bipartisan initiative. So that's what I'm focused on. Thank you. Senator Annie Reid, WCPN. Um, I am, you were sending your, during the election, you retracted your endorsement of Mr. Trump and uh, our governor, Governor Jessica, is very vocal. It's not endorsing Mr. Trump. How do you think that this is going to affect Ohio Yeah, I'm not. I'm not concerned. I mean, I, I think we'll have a good relationship with the administration. Again, as you heard me say, election night, Annie, um, I intended to work with whoever got elected um, to get things done that help Ohio. And you know, I've had again great conversations with with Mike Pence since the election. Uh, I've also spoken uh, to Donald Trump briefly. Uh, very good conversation. Um, you know, they uh, they're going to want to work with uh, people who are committed to making progress, and I'm certainly one of those people, and I happen to be involved in all these uh, issues we talked about, not just during the lame duck, but going forward, uh, like tax reform and infrastructure improvements and regulatory relief. We've got legislation that we believe we can work with them on that's bipartisan, we can get some things done, and I think that's what they're going to look for. So I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to move forward on some of these things that have been stuck in the mud for too long. Thanks everyone for your questions. Please let Kevin or Emily know if you have any follow-up. Great. Thanks everybody. See you soon. Thank you.